Hi, everybody. Welcome to Ellensburg, Washington, USA. Thank you for joining us today. This is a warm, welcoming place. I hope that you feel comfortable here. And uh, we already have Two hundred and fifty people waiting. That's awfully nice. So thank you for joining us. And more and more will trickle in in the next fifteen minutes. The local time. Is one forty six and a half, something like that. So in about thirteen minutes we will begin this program on the Nanaimo group, starring Jerome Lesman. So, you can fast forward this if you're watching a replay. You can go ahead 13 minutes to get to the beginning of the program. I typically do something like this, I think. Uh, so, that's the signal that we're starting the program. But for right now, we're just uh, saying hi to folks, double checking that we are functional, and uh, just visiting a bit. So I'm looking at the live chat right now. I see Vinman's Bakery is with us. Hello, Jeff. Kathy from Australia. Now, first of all, just five by five. Looks oh, we have people. Thank you. I'm already hearing all sorts of five by five. And I have Lappy down a little bit lower. Tap, tap, tap. Are we okay with the lapel microphone being this low? I thought I was a little bit loud last time. Um, so I'm, I'm down one button. And we'll see how this works, because I'll get I'll get ramped up here. Okay, good. Thank you. So where are you viewing from? Can I say hello to some of you? And before I do that, I'm sorry, before I do that, let me, we, we took a, a, a week off, correct? So I'll do this a number of times just to make sure people are feeling like they know what's going on. Here we are, the last day of November, 2022, session D. We will be back to our normal schedule for the next few weeks. Uh, show E is Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific. Show F is Wednesday afternoon, 2 p.m. That's our normal time, Pacific. And show G, Saturday morning, December 10th at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Okay, I'll, I'll remind people of that coming down the road. So uh, I'm going to scroll back because I already see a bunch of places and I, I kind of jumped the gun. Sorry. Uh, so Daphne's from Virginia. Hello. Phil's from the Index Pluton. Uh, Nibi is in, uh, she's a California gal, but she's in Michigan. And uh, OMAC, Washington, Wisconsin Rapids. Rick, Gopiadgers. Murabina, Victoria, Australia. Hello, Ian. The Boring Volcanic Field, that's near Portland, Oregon, from Mount Sylvania. David's in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm back a ways. Stephanie's in uh, Yarmouth, UK. Love is the answer, says all good, Nick. Thank you. I like your handle. Edgar Rock, Washington. That's David. Port Boy, Catalonia. C. Carter, I don't know where that is. Can you help me? Thank you. Uh, Jeff is from NT, Australia. Feeling dumb at the moment. I don't know what these places are specifically. I don't even know how to read the names correctly. Uh, I will be emailing Jerome in just a second. Thank you for the reminder. You're up in BC. Hopefully, we have a number of BCs. Tom is in Arnhem, Netherlands. Uh, Swansea, Wales. Hobart, Tasmania. Uh, both Tezza and Bryce from Tasmania. I don't know if they are related or not. That's a dumb thing to say. Like, am I related to everybody in Washington? No, I don't think so. Rogue Valley, Oregon. That's Carla. Uh, Ontario, Canada. Hillsboro, Oregon. Columbia, Missouri. Marinette, Wisconsin. New Mexico. Phoenix, Arizona. Colorado. I'm down to live. Without meaning to. Sonora, California. Marion, Iowa. Sport Orchard. That's probably Port Orchard in uh, Washington, Laureen. Burlington, Washington. Detroit Suburbia, Renton, Washington, Marshfield, Wisconsin. God, we got a lot of Badgers here today. To uh, Tozen, Maryland. Laurie's in Phoenix, Oregon, I think. Um, Boulder Creek, California. Missoula, Montana. I'm kind of looking out for Merle. So let me tell you a quick Merle story. We got we got a few minutes. 
So by now, almost all of you know Merle Beck. You know that name, Merle Beck. Uh, the original, the OG of Baja BC. And I have interviewed Merle a couple of times over the last couple of years. And most recently, no Antarctica this time. Yeah, yeah, I'm disappointed. We don't have, you know, a bunch of people watching from Antarctica. Okay. I I'm glad you're all here. Uh, so Murrow was in an uh, uh, apartment, and he had an accident, uh, I guess last week, broke his femur, and he's 89 years old. Apparently, that's the second time he broke that femur. Merle, when you see this, I hope you're okay that I'm, I'm sharing this. I guess you shared that in the live chat last time. Well, anyway, Merle Beck, 80, age 89, who has politely declined being involved live with any of this stuff because he just felt like he wasn't up to it and keeping up with whatever. He just has his little iPad. Was in the live chat last time. And I saw that in the replay. And he was checking in from his rehab facility. And uh, talked to Merle on the phone last night. I said, you know, in addition to getting caught up and he had some backstory on uh, me and uh, backstory for me and some suggestions on how I might deal with paleo mag. And uh, we'll get into that a little bit today. I'll talk about that. But basically, as we were wrapping up, I'm like, Merle, how did I, I thought you didn't know how to get into the live chat? He said, I don't I don't know how to get in the live chat. I just happened to like tune in. And there was this button and I just clicked on it and suddenly I was in the live chat. It even said my name. Like he got in there by accident. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, we'll see you Wednesday at 2 p.m. In other words, we'll see you tomorrow afternoon at 2. He's like, what? What day is it? <laughs> I said, tomorrow's Wednesday, Merle. There's going to be a live show. You want to be in the live chat again? He said, well, absolutely, I will. Hope I can find that button again. <laughs> so I don't know if Merle's... If Merle's going to make it or not, he's maybe frantically looking for his, his magic button. But anyway, he's been watching these, at least in replay. And, and uh, if he can't find it properly, then, then I'll be sending him by email, that sort of thing. So anyway, there's lots of nice comments about Merle. I wish he could join us. William Matthews from Calgary. Hello. Nice to see you today. Yeah, a few more hellos. Uh, how are we doing? Yeah, we got plenty of time. Uh, Feeling too comfortable with the with the technology at the moment. That's a bad sign, but feeling feeling good at the moment. Uh, Jennifer from Boise, hello, and uh, another Boise, and get well, Merle. Uh, get well soon, Merle. Yes, he's got a long road, and he knows that, but he's up for it. Douglas is in Clyde Park, Montana. Bo is in um, Denmark. Kirk is in Sweden. Cleveland, Ohio, San Diego, California. Don's in Los Angeles, Menominee, Wisconsin. It's cold and windy. Yeah, we got a uh, decent snowstorm came through the Pacific Northwest over the last 24 hours. We got about four to five inches of light, fluffy stuff. I was shoveling quite a bit this morning, thinking about what I wanted to do with you guys. Daniel's in Ireland. Hello. And um, so the sun's out at the moment and starting to melt, I think. But uh, Many places in the Pacific Northwest, even Seattle, I believe, got some snow. Unusual for Seattle. Natick, Massachusetts, Sprague, Washington, Martha's Vineyard, Otter Rock, Oregon, Garrett, the Dutch Nile. Uh, whoa. Garrett, the Dutch night owl from the Netherlands. Hoping to uh, see something soon from Nora Lee been missing her regular posts, as I'm sure many of you have as well. But she deserves a break, of course. If, I, if, I, if my math is correct, she's already on the road. She's already been, she's been home for four months. I think she's probably on the road, but there's that lag business. What do I know? Rain tonight in Central California, reports Papa Gino. John says hello from Crescent City, California. Marianne is uh, in Roy, Utah. All right. Got about four minutes. Uh, I will remember to share the schedule again. What do I need to check? I need to check something. What do I need to check? I want to check my other camera. 
Oh, and I got a text. Hang on. Oh. I got a text from Jerome saying, hey, where's the link? Good point. That's my bad. Jerome, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Uh, that's what I forgot to do. So I had to have the guest text me and remind me. Add guest. Copy link. Paste. Send. Sorry, Jerome, if you're watching. Although maybe you're not, now that I think about it. I, I got to text him. Hang on. Sorry, I forgot. Just sent the email. What a dum dum. We have almost 600 already. That's delightful. Even with our uh, missed uh, episode uh, for the Thanksgiving weekend here. Great. All right, I suppose I better hang on here until I see Jerome in the green room. That was dumb. That was my bad. Let me say hi to a few more while I'm waiting for Jerome to pop up in the green room. Honey Greg in East Tennessee. Uh, hi, Jerome, looking for more from Idaho. Okay, well, <laughs> okay, they're talking. <laughs> All right. South Wales, hello, Mark. Kirk in Philomath, Oregon. Heard of it. There's Daryl Cowan from uh, It's Trying to Snow in Seattle. Hi, Daryl. All right, now I'm starting to get nervous. I don't see Jerome. Nope, nope, he'll show up. Yuma, Arizona, I, we might start a couple minutes late because I, I don't want to start hot mic until I see that D uh, Jerome's with us. Snowflakes in Seattle, apparently. Eric is in South Seattle. Wes is in Lake Orion, Michigan. Nikki is in Alaska. Hello, Nikki. John Schellenberger says hello. Hey, John. Thanks for joining us. Sorry I missed you today. Nick and Jerome from Nampa, Idaho. Oh, I think we see a... There he is. Hello, Jerome. Wow. No wave? We'll see if he can hear me. He's kind of frozen. Hey, Jerome, are you frozen right now? Oh, there you go. All right, you're kind of choppy. If you can hear me, you're kind of choppy. I'll let you play with it a little bit, but I'm glad that you're with us live. Talking to Jerome Lessman, our guest, in the green room. And uh, in case he can hear us, I'm letting you know, Jerome, that you are very choppy and uh, don't know if you have a plan B for that. We'll hope it settles down. Okay. Uh, I have no minutes, but I have to take an extra couple minutes to get my head right here. Okay, so thank you for joining us. We'll start this program two minutes late. Two minutes. Hot mic. Okay, Jerome is in the green room, but his video is mostly frozen. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do if he doesn't fix that on his end? I don't know what you can do, really. Um, okay, I guess what you can do is you can speed up your chalkboard thing even more. Well, see if there's still a problem with his video. And if there is, then maybe he can scramble... Maybe he can adjust on his end. So you can't wait for 30. You, you can't go to him 30 minutes into the program. I think that's what I'm telling you, boy. You can't do that. OK, 
Okay, but that's out of your control. Just focus on what you're doing here. You're getting, you're, you're getting to the laptop quickly. The, the pace is very brisk on the chalkboards. Don't belabor anything. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Our guest has left the green room. Give me another minute. That's that's a bit of a concern. Give me another minute. I'm texting Jerome. Jerome, you're black in the green room. Now I see you. I don't want to ruin the surprise, but like you're still very choppy with vi with video. And I don't know what to tell you, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and we'll just hope for the best. Okay. Weird start. Almost forgot to do that. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to this session, show D, called the Nanaimo Group, with Jerome Lessman, who's in the green room right now, but there's a bit of a technology issue that we're trying to solve. I'm just going to assume that he's going to figure things out in the next 20 minutes or so, assuming he can still hear me, and we'll just go for it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We go to plan B. If we go to plan C, we go to plan D, whatever. Uh, but if you remember last winter, Jerome Lessman was with us twice. And each of his two appearances last winter, he was breaking new ground. He was a trailblazer. He was a razzle-dazzle person. He was the first live guest we ever had. And he gave us a tour of his lab room, if you remember, with his iPhone. And... In February, right before we quit the crazy Eocene A to Z series, he was all fancy with Google Earth and all sorts of geology overlays on top of it. I have no idea how he did it. Uh, so anyway, he's got something up his sleeve, and uh, we'll try to make it happen. We'll just keep our fingers crossed. Okay. Scheduling-wise, before I forget, can I please remind you that we are back to our normal schedule, which is Wednesday afternoons at 2 p.m. Pacific, Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Pacific, and today we're November 30th, but the next time I see you will be Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific with our next guest. And in fact, I should tell you right now that we have D, E, and F all devoted to the Nanaimo group. We have Canadians lined up today, hopefully, Saturday morning, and next Wednesday afternoon. So the Nanaimo group is one of our special spots. Okay, well, right off the bat, you can see on the outline today, I don't like it. Viewers, I need some help. The concept is this. In other words, I need, I need help with, a, with a, a kind of a catchy phrase that's better than special spots. It sounds creepy and weird. So the idea is that to this winter, we're looking at exotic terrains going from Alaska down to Mexico, really. And there's so many different terrains. There's so many different stories. There's, there's way too much to fit into just a few episodes that we're not doing that. Instead, what I would like to try to do this winter is well, I would like to have some very specific case studies. In other words, grab just, I don't know, a half a dozen, maybe a dozen by the time the winter is done, of particular spots within this grand fruitcake of exotic terrain that we can drill down into. We can get into the nitty gritty because people have been looking at those special spots or those case study locations. I don't know, maybe I'm making it up now for myself. But 
the Nanaimo is the, our first of probably a dozen or so special spots. Still don't like it. So if you have an idea, I'll enjoy watching the replay and seeing your thoughts. But you, you know what I'm getting at. I've written out a few that I know will be special spots this winter. Mount Stewart, which is right over there, and I'm living in the shadow of, of course, is one of our kind of case locations. Mount Tatlo, which was brought up by Basil in the last show. Did you see it? I hope you're watching these shows in order. Basil Tickoff in the show last time mentioned that Jane Wynn was up looking at Mount Tatlo, and there was amazing uh, volcanic deposits and sedimentary layers that showed original paleo... Okay, stop, stop, stop. We'll get into it. The Carmax up in the Yukon, the Carmax Volcanics, I keep hearing about it. I know not a damn thing about it. I know for sure that at least two of our guests are going to be leaning heavily into the Carmax Volcanics. The Wiz, the Western Idaho Shear Zone, that was Basil last time, and we will have Basil back after the first of the year, probably, uh, to return to the Wiz. And then, yes, today, the Nanaimo. Last comment about our special spots. I'm rolling my eyes every time because I, I now hate it. Focal points, is that what Oscar's saying? Okay, that maybe works. Okay. Each of these are paleomag spots. They're famous for their paleomagnetic signatures, making a case for 3,000 kilometers of northward transport. Breaking news. We're not going to do paleomag until after the first of the year. Mostly because of the schedule of the guests that I've been trying to line up. It's just not working out to have the paleomag people in December. That's fine. That's up to me to make it all work. But just letting you know that these three focus points uh, and other paleomag discussions is obviously the main thing we're doing this winter, but we're going to wait until after Christmas to do it. So. Today is the first of three visits to the Nanaimo group, a collection of sedimentary layers in British Columbia, mostly exposed on Vancouver Island. And what I'm hoping to do for just a few minutes before we go to Jerome is to try to give you a sense of why the Nanaimo has been looked at so much. And Jerome is going to definitely talk about that as well. So we are done with our first three sessions which were setting the tone for the whole series and looking at the original paper and 25 years later and 50 years later, we're done with that kind of table setting. We now kind of make a transition today using Jerome Lessman, who's a teacher, just like I am. I think he's a gifted teacher. He's an Ice Age Floods guy, I remember, but he also has taught so much about the Nanaimo group that he has some, um, uh, he, he will do a nice job of setting up our next two shows with the Nanaimo details. So we're going to Nanaimo, British Columbia today, which is on Vancouver Island. If you're new to the series, this is what he looks like. And I can see him now in the green room, Jerome. You're looking better, so it looks like you're in a uh, uh, portrait instead of landscape or whatever. I think that's going to work. So these are my notes. What am I doing? I'm showing you my notes. Okay? So that's the idea. The other thing I'm doing, hopefully quickly, and then I'll go to the laptop, and then we go to Jerome is go back in our bag of tricks from last winter. And yes, I will be doing that on occasion, but I feel like it's my job to set up Jerome and to set up the other two shows coming soon by putting our narrative back together. So if you're veterans of the series, you know what this is about, but let me include you or remind you in case you forgot. Out of all the exotic terrains making up the Cordillera of North America, there are three main events, and I'm going to take, I'm going to pay, uh, take uh, Basil's tip, the way he uh, abbreviated these things last show, and I'm going to do that this time. So I'm just going to do IM from this point on for the Intermontane Superterrain, which accreted to North America 170 million years ago. The INS is the Insular Superterrain. That's the thing that hit in the last show 100 million years ago. Hit and run. Remember, we're not talking about the run right now. We're just talking about these three main hits. And the Siletzia slam. This is Siletzia 50 million years ago. So what I really want to do before we go to Jerome live is to get rid of this chalkboard. Go to this chalkboard really for the first time this winter. Do something very quickly. And I'm building to something new. It's a new thought for me this morning as I was kind of putting this show together. 
This blue line roughly is the western edge of the craton of North America. Even that's debatable, but let's just run with something here. So this is, everything is old North America to the east of that blue line. And our last show with basil was right here in western Idaho, the western Idaho shear zone. And basil's new paper, I don't know if you've had a chance to read it yet. Uh, I've, I've looked at it, and I'll continue to look at it. I'll keep coming back to it. Maybe you will as well. Basil's confident that the Blue Mountains in northeastern Oregon has exotic terrain material that we're going to associate with the intermontane superterrain. I don't know how controversial that is, but I'm going to run with it because of our work with basil. So what I'm labeling here are what to me is the for sure spots where our three main event terrains exist, the super terrains. So this is the thing that accreted originally 170 million years ago. We still have it for sure in the Blue Mountains. That's all I'm comfortable saying. Here's more of it up in British Columbia. Up in British Columbia. So that's Cash Creek and Friends. That's Cash Creek, Stakinia, Quinellia. Remember that whole thing, possibly. Seletsia, jumping to the youngest of the three superterrene accretions, the Seletsia Slam, that was much of last winter. Some of you were, God, my God, so sick of Seletsia by the end of last winter's crazy Eocene A to Z series. That's for sure out here at Olympic Peninsula and down here in the coast range of Oregon. That's the thing that added 50 million years ago. But the focal point of this winter, slowing down now for dramatic effect, is the insular superterrain, Rangelia and Friends. And the classic exposure of that insular superterrain is up here near Jerome's house. Here's Jerome. We're going to him live soon. Here's me in Ellensburg. And the insular superterrain is up there. And you're like, wait a minute. I thought you said the insular superterrain is the thing that hit to make the Rocky Mountains. And one of the main messages from the last show is, that's what Basil's saying, but this is the thing that hit down here and then ran up the coast. So on this map, the only for sure spot, I've got this beast, this insular superterrain, Rangeli and France. The only place on this map that I have it for sure is at Jerome's house. But the Rockies are down here as well, which means that we're going to continue to think and work on this idea of an insular hit and run. Hit it down here, send it north. Most of it's up in British Columbia, Baja, BC. Get it? Now, before we go to Jerome, I'm starting just today, just today, I'm starting to wonder... Is most of the North Cascades of northern Washington insular? And I'm slowing down because I've never been bold enough to just try to go with that and then get talked out of it later. And if you've been a fan of all these series, you've, you've heard me asking all sorts of people out in the field, Bob Miller, Stacia Gordon, Mike Eddy, whomever, Daryl Collins, like, where are we? Is this insular or intermontane? And I get a different answer from every person who knows the details of these exotic terrains well. But you'll see in the laptop in just a second, I'm starting to wonder, is this stuff, including Mount Seward, firmly insular? And if it is, then our boundary that's very important between intermontane and insular is maybe the Pesaden Fault or maybe something to the north, but that's a new thing for me to lean into that all this North Cascades geology just north of my town, right over there, is insular. And part of you goes, well, of course it is. You've been talking about Mount Stewart coming from Mexico the whole time, and isn't that insular? And part of me goes, yeah, I guess it is. But then there's all sorts of other things in North Cascades that are not obviously the insular superterrain. That's really the thing I'm working on right now, trying to get my mind around it. I got one more thing I want to do on the chalkboard. So we're getting rid of that. Used it for the first time. Feeling good. Oh, my God. Is this, this is basil from last show. Not going in. Not, we're not getting into that again. 
dancing with the chalkboards. But I think I can do this pretty quickly. You're still looking choppy, Jerome. You're still looking, your video's still looking choppy. We'll, we'll, we'll try it in a few minutes, but you're still really frozen most of the time. Don't know what to say. Okay, so let's try it this way. Same thing I just said. Intermontane accreting first, 170. Insular accreting 100. Celestia accreting 50. But let's do it in cross-section, and let's do it in accordion fashion. Even though I'm not a one on the scale, let's be as simple as we can and just bring this stuff in. So here's North America. This is a sunny day. It's a cross-section. Here's a couple people. What? And here is the western Idaho shear zone, the true edge of the craton of North America. Old cratonic North America. 170 million years ago, bring in the intermontane superterrain. 170 million years ago. That's the docking day. Apparently, there was then a rifting of intermontane away from North America, and that came in again. I don't understand that. Let's leave it alone. The major story, again, if we're thinking about an accordion, is a much larger, apparently, insular superterrain. Rangelia and friends. And then finally, 50 million years ago, the last terrain to accrete to the Pacific Northwest, Celestia, and half of it's up in Alaska as the Yakutat, came in 50 million years ago. Okay, so am I really just rehashing everything we did last winter? No, I'm setting up this new thought. And yes, it involves props. Let me explain. There are major questions about the exotic terrains in central Washington where I live. There are major questions about which terrains are which, who is here in the fruitcake in the basement of this area of central Washington because there's a German chocolate cake covering everything. And that German chocolate cake That German chocolate cake is 16 million years old. It's the flood basalts of the Columbia River basalt group. And it's three miles thick in its middle, the German chocolate cake, which I've referred to a bunch of times. It's a problem. It does us no good studying the layers of the German chocolate cake, the flood basalt layers, are not going to help us one iota to understand the exotic terrain basement that lies beneath. Is it really intermontane that's beneath the German chocolate cake? We maybe will never know. Is there truly the boundary between the insular and the intermontane down there someplace? Possibly. But because this thing is so young, because the German chocolate cake was created 16 million years ago, it's not helpful to us when thinking about Baja BC. Because you remember the dates for Baja BC. You remember the dates for this proposed 3,000 kilometers of northward movement. The proposal says that northward journey of the insular superterrain starts 85 million years ago, and it keeps moving north until 55 million years ago. The German chocolate cake, not helpful to us. But you know there's another cake. And it's not a German chocolate cake that's made out of basalt that's 16 million years old. It's a party rainbow chip cake, which I used to call a confetti cake when I was young. And for my birthday, my mom always baked me a confetti cake, and it was delightful. It was a party. Funfetti, confetti, I don't care what you call it. It's a cake with a ton of sprinkles in it. And what cake is that? It's the Nanaimo. The Nanaimo is also a cake that is sitting on top of exotic terrains. 
the Nanaimo is also three miles thick in the middle. The confetti cake, a.k.a. the Nanaimo group, was created during Baja BC time. Instead of a cake being in the way and covering up the data that we need, in today, Saturday, and next Wednesday's show, we're going to be spending a lot of time in the confetti cake looking at all the sand grains and other kinds of deposits, realizing that the insular superterrain is moving north, supposedly, during the type, during the time that the Nanaimo group was being deposited. That's why we're spending three shows on this special place, this special spot called the Nanaimo. And why confetti? It's mostly sandstone, as we'll see with Jerome and the others. But not all the sand grains have the same composition, and not all the sand grains have the same story to tell. There is a wide variety in ages and composition of the sand in the confetti. So the sprinkles in this confetti cake, otherwise known as the Nanaimo, which firmly sits on top of Insular, is not near the Intermontane. But since we care so much about this guy, this is the one that hit and ran, and now we got this thing being deposited on top. We're making the cake as we send this trip north. That's why we're fascinated and continue to be fascinated by the Nanaimo group. We're moving on. I have a couple minutes left. Here's my text to Jerome. <laughs> okay. And there's the weather. We don't need it. There is a paper that Jerome sent me for today's show. It is up here at nicksetner.com. Not secure. By now, that's a joke. I know how to get rid of it, but let's just keep it. Not secure, nicksetner.com. Click on Baja in the upper right. There is a new paper added. It's an Anaimo group paper from the mid-1990s, so more than 25 years ago, by Peter Mustard. And Jerome's content for us today will be dovetailing nicely with this 25-year-old paper from the Nanaimo group with techniques that were used back then. And then by the time we get to the next two shows in the series, we can see how many advances we've had since this 1994 paper by Peter. So thank you to Jerome for the paper. Let's go to a couple final images for you. Reminding you, this is what we're talking about. And from this point forward, I think I might try to stick with Daryl's color scheme. He's got brown for intermontane. He's got orange for insular. 80 million years ago, here comes insular. 70 million years ago, here comes insular. Now, what I'm doing with my new thought today is ignoring the yellow. The yellow is the coast belt. The yellow is the pizza boxes. The yellow, I think, is the marshmallow that uh, Basil was talking about. Um, I'm trying to be as simple as possible. This is VI. This is Vancouver Island where Jerome is. And Mount Stewart is our red dot. So until I'm forced to abandon this, I think I want to keep going with this narrative of ignoring the yellow and just what happens if we lump the yellow in with the orange? What happens if we just consider all this yellow to be part of the insular story? And that includes Mount Stewart. And remember then that our Nanaimo is a cake sitting on top of the orange and not a cake sitting on top of the brown. It's the German chocolate cake that's the brown cake on top of the brown. Oh, confusing. Okay. So last show, Basil was here at the Western Idaho Shear Zone. He's telling us from this new paper that this Blue Mountain scene is for sure intermontane. And I think he's also saying the Klamaths are part of the same story, but let's not go there today. Yes, he's telling us the intermontane, Basil, last show, and the insular were originally apparently side by side. I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm talking about, so let me stop. Here's the German chocolate cake, which we don't care about at all. Not helpful to us. 16 million years old. I mean, when I would use this to teach, I would say, well, here's this basalt, 
Here's this pile of basalt, this huge cow pie on the middle of Eastern, or Eastern Oregon and Eastern Washington. I would never really think carefully about this. But now, of course, this winter, I want to know, is this intermontane or in, how much is intermontane, how much is insular, et cetera. I mean, it's a thick pile of German chocolate cake, but not helpful to us at all. But if we go up to where we're going right now, Jerome, five-minute warning. If we go to Jerome's house right here in Nanaimo, and we realize that the mainland on the other side of Vancouver, British Columbia, is the Coast Belt. And in this simple cartoon, we're having the Coast Belt just cross the border and go into the North Cascades. I want to ask, is this all insular? How many, how many geologists are we going to talk to that see all of this as insular? They really think this is intermontane? There's a third choice? Well, what is it? It doesn't make sense to me if there's a third choice. I'm going to hammer that until I'm totally talked out of it. So yeah, the confetti cake is just as deep as the German chocolate cake, but it's not chocolate. It's confetti. The Nanaimo sitting on top of Rangelia, sitting on top of the San Juan terrain, sitting on top of some of the coast belt. But to me, I'm wondering if this is all just simply insular. Daryl's 1994 cartoons, again, same color scheme. Insular, intermontane. Right now, I'm lumping yellow with orange. Right now, I'm lumping yellow with orange. I might regret it. 95 million years ago, insulars down south of California. Today, of course, it's way north of California. Okay, I, I got to go to Jerome, but I, I found this out of a master's thesis by Andy Miner, put together by somebody called Finn in 1998, and I'm fascinated by this. Uh, pro Jerome, I promise I'm not going to get carried away here, but this is an aeromagnetic compilation, basically looking at reflective surfaces in the subsurface. I don't know what I'm talking about now, right? But this is getting rid of the cakes. And just looking at these patterns in the deep fruitcake of the Pacific Northwest and making some sort of interpretive call. What are the green dots? That's me. This is Ellensburg. This is Moses Lake, Washington. And this is the little town of Chelan, Washington. And here's this guy Finn, or this gal Finn, calling much of the North Cascades the insular. And just north of Ellensburg, again, beneath the German chocolate cake, he has pizza boxes just north of Ellensburg, correlative with the pizza boxes of the San Juan Islands and Darrow Cowan country. Is that real? East Melange Belt, West Melange Belt. I'm fascinated by this, and I don't know how much I'll keep coming back to it, but this guy's thinking most of this is insular here. Slides that Jerome sent me this morning. Uh, we're going to look at the Nanaimo on the, on the eastern coast of the Vancouver Island scene. Uh, stratigraphic columns, some detail that Jerome's probably going to help us see. I don't know if you're wanting me to show these slides while you were visiting with you, Jerome. I don't even know if I can do that, but we can try. But we just got to see if we've got video with you. Amazing shots of Nanaimo group exposed of the waters surrounding Vancouver Island. So Jerome has been on the YouTube channel a fair amount in the last two years. I spent a whole weekend with him and his students a year and a half ago. I was up solo with Jerome this past spring talking about Ice Age floods. But it's time to go to him. Jerome, I'm coming to you. Let's hope this works, Ben. Let's hope this works. I'm telling you, you're... Battery 100%. You're frozen in the green room, but let's hope it's just the green room. Let's bring you in, Jerome, and we'll give it a try. Jerome Lesman, how are you today? Good, how are you? Well, I'm doing well. No, can you hear me, Nick? What's that? I can hear you, but there's a big delay, and you're very pixelated, I'm sorry to say. Behind the tree now, but it's uh, Texada Island is the highest yeah. point in the, in the Sorry, I'm having a conversation with on the roadside here at the same time. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking. <laughs> Sorry.
Sorry. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Too much for my brain to keep up. Two conversations at oh, once. No, I got you. Okay. Uh, you want? Are you are you seeing me? Okay. We are I'm seeing you. you. You're very choppy and blurry, but your audio seems to be okay. Let's just see if your if your audio is okay. Let's go back and forth with audio for just a touch. Where are you okay. right now? Boy, oh, this is a bummer. This was gonna be this was gonna be so sweet. Jerome was gonna be at a field site after the snowfall. Sounds good. So worst case, so right now I'm on Gabriola Island. So Gabriola is a little island. Well, it's a sizable island. It's a residential island. Oh, it's not working. It's you're totally frozen video wise. Um, I, it looks like you've tried to exit and come back in. Should we? Can I kick you off so and how have am you I come on sound? back in? Are you okay on sound? It's a little delayed, but I think we can make it work. Yeah. But it's it's the video. You're just frozen. So let me try to. I'm gonna turn off the video and see if that improves. Okay. You're always breaking new ground. Second. I tell you that. Yeah. Uh, well. I think I'm, I'm falling on my face this time. So sound is good? I think the sound is better. Let's keep going. So where are you right now? Okay. So here's what we can do. This is probably the, the only way this is going to work. So I'll talk and you just won't see where I am. And you'll have to just be my, uh, my drawer or something. Or you'll flip the slides and we'll work from there. Okay. Oh, what a bummer. Man, this was going to be so sweet, man. Well, we'll try the best we or can. Something like that. Yeah. Um, so let me let me tell you where I am. I'm on Gabriola Island. Uh, Gabriola is an island that is just offshore of the many Gulf Islands. So it's part of these uh, linear islands that make up the eastern shore of Vancouver Island. And it's okay. an island composed entirely of the bedrock, the sedimentary rocks of the Nanaimo Group. Okay. So it's sort of a place where and you'll come back, the name will come back in the coming weeks for sure. And if, um, because it is a, it's one of the many, but fundamental sites for understanding the Nanaimo group, basically. Okay. So mm -hmm. the sandstones, the conglomerates that are uh, part of the, of the uh, pardon me, of the Nanaimo group, they're really well exposed on Gabriel Island. And therefore uh, it's a place where there's been lots of work done. And it's where some of the more recent work that is kind of shedding new light on our understanding of this basin and its trajectory during Baja BC episode is uh, this new work is taking place from some of the deposits that are on, on Gabriola. So okay. it's a, an important spot that way. Maybe what we can do, if you're able, can you put those slides that you have? Is that possible? I can I can experiment like it, it can't hurt, but I, I've never done it before. So I'll try to figure out how to do that while you're talking. Do you want to try video one more time just to see if it's any better? Yeah, let's try that. Well, I, I see can, uh, just a still image of you. Okay, getting better, getting better. Okay. Looking looking good right now. Fu Manchu, looking good. All right. So we'll we'll make hay while the sun's shining. If you see behind me, there's rocks behind me. Uh, those are great examples of the way that most of the sandstones and the conglomerate units of the Nanaimo group uh, are organized. So there's a really they're in channels. This is one of the key things that um, is part of the message in terms of the deposition of some of the units in the Nemo group is that they're in deep water submarine fan systems and then these submarine fans have channels. Okay. And so right behind me, if you can see it well enough, um, there's sandstone and there's a very sharp boundary. I'm going to try to do that across here below this way to a mudstone unit. So if ever there's a chance to go back to those slides that I sent you, the basic pattern of the stratigraphy of the Nanaimo group is sandstone conglomerate units that tend to be quite coarse 
And then um, those are interbedded with mudstone units. Okay. Are we good? So this far, is still working, going? This is, this is working okay. much better. It, you're a little, slightly choppy, but otherwise, this is great. Let's keep it going, baby. All right. So um, there we are. You can see, I can, there's the contact. You can see the base. So this is the bottom. Think of this as the bottom of a channel. And okay. the channel is carrying sand in places it carries gravel as well. And it is responsible for depositing very extensive, laterally extensive, but also very thick packages of sandstone. Okay. And it's out of those sandstones uh, in particular that some of the zircon drains, for example, that you'll be revisiting in the future, uh, were collect have been collected historically. Mm -hmm. So let's maybe back it up a little bit because part of the reason why I wanted to come here in this particular location is because of the, I think there's a number of reasons why Nanaimo Group is relevant to the Baja BC story. And you touched mm -hmm. on it a bit in your introduction. Um, but the, probably the, the simplest way to think about it is that uh, out of the rocks of Nanaimo Group have in the last five decades or so have come out or have those rocks have produced various data sets that tell a part of the, the Baja BC story. And those data okay. sets are really varied. And they range from zircons is one example. Uh, there are data sets related to paleomagnetism. And we can chat a little bit about this because it's a little bit different uh, to the application of the same principles, but to different materials, not just igneous rock like you had with what Merle did and uh, Linda Nosen did. Um, there are some fossil records out of some of the Nanaimo group units that also can inform us about the trajectory of this basin. And then there are some studies on um, the composition of sandstones and the composition of conglomerates, actually looking at the clasts that are in the sand, then the conglomerates, pardon me, and then some of the sand grains that are in the sandstones. All, if you put all that together, it gives you four or five, six different data sets. And some of these data sets converge in terms of what they're, they're suggesting, and some of them diverge. In other words, there's, there's contradictory um, results out of these different data sets. It's just part of the reason why the Baja Beast story is still going or is still unresolved in many ways and why there's still ongoing work to this uh trying to resolve this question because the data sets sometimes point in different directions can i interrupt you can you hear me please uh yeah this just is fine. this is this is working better than than it was originally so uh, you're you're such a pro you're just you're just rattling right on even though we've got <laughs> incredible challenges here I'm curious about that outcrop. How much do you use that for your teaching? And have you changed how you teach from that outcrop over the years? Mm. I shouldn't have interrupted. Kiss of death. Yeah, I, I use it a lot. But, I mean, as you said in the intro, my, I'm, I'm not a person, I'm not, I have done no research in tectonics. I mean, I'm, uh, no, no, more, more related to, I mean, the work I do is more related to sedimentology. <laughs> um, are we back? We're good? Kind of, I don't know. Yes? Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. Good, good. So the um, the outcrop ontology and stratigraphy we come here because it's these outcrops are world class outcrops. If you're thinking about deep water systems, it's very very okay. Well, I'm going to interrupt again and let see me if kill the can... video for a second. Yeah, let's just go to yeah. sound. Okay. So I'll I think even your audios how far are you, how close are you to the nearest whatever that has like Wi-Fi or something? Are you is it we good? way I'm, too many minutes? <laughs> Full uh, 5G coverage.
I should be like powering what right the heck? through this thing. Huh. Uh, I don't know what to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick you off and we'll have you try to come in one more time. Magically, that might help. If you can hear me, I'm kicking you off and just join us again. We'll see if that solves it, Jerome. Otherwise, I think we might have to give up on this, to be honest. Uh, I'm kicking you off. Hope to hear you back in just a second. All right, well, I'll stay right here. Man. Um, are we five by five right now? I think I'm just going to uh, freelance a little bit more with uh, a couple of handouts that I have, and we'll hope to get Jerome one more time. He really had that. He was so excited to do this, and I was so up for it. And we've been chatting back and forth about the snow, and is he still going to go out and everything else? So, yeah, obviously, I'm half listening like you are, maybe, because we can't quite get all the words and everything else, but we'll just try this. So, okay, here, here he is again. We'll see if we're any better. Same frozen stuff, Jerome. Back better. I guess we're giving up on the video and we're hoping just for audio from you if we can just get it to work, but we've got a delay here as yeah. well. All right, if you can hear me, I've got one more suggestion. It looks like Oscar and a bunch of others are saying, restart your phone. So just in case you can hear me, I'm going to kick you out one last time, Jerome. I'm not going to give up. Restart your phone. See if that magically... Okay, I turned off the video. Over. Is the sound coming through? It's just barely coming through. So I'm going to kick you out and have you restart your phone. Yeah. And we'll see, we'll see if that works, Okay. Okay, goodbye. God. Oh. oh, my God. Hey, at least I don't get ticked off like I used to. Like, you know, we, we know there's enough variables here. So where is Jerome Ben? He has been trying to report to you from right here. And our confetti cake is covering much of this, Rangelia as well as some of the Coast Belt. And Jerome was really hoping, uh, may, may still be appearing, hoping to kind of help us see how much work has happened in the Nanaimo group for so many years and how really since the mid 90s, well, maybe I'll get myself in trouble now, but it felt like there wasn't a ton of work in the Nanaimo since Peter Mustard's paper in the mid 1990s. I don't really know if that's true or not. Jerome was, I think, going to comment on that. But there has been this explosion of information and new renewed interest in the Nanaimo group really in the last five years, as far as I can tell. And that's who we have both Saturday and the following Wednesday. Uh, Jerome is rebooting his computer. And now I have OBS that has quit unexpectedly.
can you hear me okay? Okay, I think he's starting a new stream, so I'm not sure what's what's happening. So can you see me choppy? Can you see me pretty clear? <laughs> Man. All right. So I'll keep talking. Somebody says keep talking. So if you can hear me, how's the video? You see the video as well? I think I think. I may not be back. The point was that what's behind me is most. Hello. Is this thing still working? Are we still together? This is crazy. <laughs> Am I broadcasting right now on the same thing? Okay, well, that's new. That's new. Wow, what will that look like in replay? Will it just jump, I wonder? Okay, it doesn't matter. Holy shit. Sorry, Patrick. The live chat's going crazy. Okay, so this is still fun. <laughs> All right, well, let me text Jerome to like try to rejoin us. And if it's the same problems, I'm just going to give up on that. But at least we can try to finish this show, you and I. Give me just a second. I don't think the other camera's even working, or is it? I don't even want to try. Ooh, the beer is going to taste good tonight when I walk home through all the snow. Thank you for still being with us. We have still more than 700 people watching, putting up with this clown show. Uh, I can't thank you enough. Um, I just texted Jerome to have him try that old link one more time. And if it's the same problem, I'm just going to give up. I just told him I have to give up on you and just we'll just try to sh finish this show you and I, because there was, I think, a good a half an hour of decent contact before we tried Jerome. So um, 
And you have all sorts of tips for Jerome, but I, I can't deal with that right now. Thank you. I love you too, Annette. I love you too. Um, <laughs> I learned that you can restart something after the whole thing crashes twice. That's new. Let's see if there's anything. Uh, I think I think I just need to try to finish this show with you. And if Jerome happens to, to show up, great. But otherwise, I just I can't. It, it, there's been enough. There have been enough problems as, as it is. OK. So. Where were we? I think I want to. Do I even need this? I'll hang on for another five minutes in case Jerome shows up again. Now, I should email him one more time. Wow. Here he is. Okay, man, this better work. Jerome? It's not happening. Jerome, if you can hear me, thank you so much for trying what you <laughs> just tried to do. It's just, it's just not working. The, the video, you're, you're kind of there right now. We'll give it another second, I guess, but I, we've got the same problems, and I have no idea if your problems are the same as my problems. Who knows? It could be all OBS is the problem, but uh, we got the same issues. So you're looking great. I'm sure you're feeling stressed out, and I'm sorry about that. Please go home, warm up, and we'll try again with you. I don't know. Maybe we'll just try some, like, makeup show or something like that. But I have to say goodbye because it's just not working. Thank you, Jerome. If you can hear me, I'm kicking you off. Well, this is one for the ages. So I want to make a couple quick comments and then we'll wrap things up. There were 26 shows last winter, and there was one show that was a technology disaster. I can't even say it. A technology disaster. It was with Aaron Donaghy about this time, if I remember right, about this time of the winter. And I couldn't hear her, and she's talking, and I'm just like totally panicked and everything else. Well, weirdly, I'm not panicked. I guess I have enough experience with this. But I feel badly that we couldn't make this happen the way that we had planned. And it's so nice that you're all thanking Jerome for the comments. So sad image of Jerome slogging down this snowy road with uh, wet boots and, uh, and all for naught. So <laughs> I will be sending him some gifts <laughs> as a thank you. So let me try to collect my thoughts and lean in. Uh, I've said that three times already. And, and just try to expand. Okay, I do need to see if I've got this because I want to spend more time with those, those laptop shots, I think. Is that camera working? At this point, why am I even trying? <laughs> All right. All right. So let me slow myself down and do a little bit more with you to set up. I guess we're not visiting with Jerome again. I don't know. But let's try this a little bit more carefully since we have a bit more time. So The, strike, the Straight Creek Fault is obviously taken out of this. And those that, knows, those that know the North Cascades geology, we have a major offset that has been removed. But I think some of the guests we're going to have in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try to ask how much of this coast plutonic complex or how much of this coast mountains batholith, there's all sorts of different names for it, that stretches essentially up to Southeast Alaska. Can we take that petrology? Can we take a number of other things in the bedrock geology of the Coast Pelt and really bring it down through the North Cascades? And if we can, 
And maybe it's the paleomag that's going to do this for us, as opposed to the detrital zircons, which is where we're headed. But if we can, then why can't it be as simple as this? And this structure, I guess, is the Pisatan fault, but that's another thing that we need to like work on. So slowing down a little bit more, um, Daryl's possibly still in the live chat and hasn't given up on us. Daryl, why did you want to break this out as a mid-Cretaceous collisional origin? Why aren't you just obviously thinking of this as the insular superterrain? And I can maybe guess your answer is something like, well, we have a bunch of crunched ocean basins and major thrust vault and naps and things that don't work nicely with some of the basics of uh, Rangelia and Friends. But I guess what I'm wondering just out loud, maybe it's embarrassing and a few shows from now, I'll be just incredibly disappointed in myself for even asking it out loud. But I wonder how much of this was essentially originally orange that has turned to yellow, meaning that it was originally simple insular that had just been damaged so badly. And so many marshmallows have come up through, so many plutons have come up through, that it just looks yellow today, but was originally orange. And again, you're, you're telling us it's a collisional origin, Daryl, back in 1994. This is that paper that you forgot about, but Basil remembered. And yes, here's Vancouver Island, firmly in orange. And here's Vancouver today, Vancouver Island today, Again, we're talking about 95 million years ago versus today. And this is Daryl Cowan almost 30 years ago drawing these cartoons all by his lonesome. And the California triad here. I, I, I'm just for the first time really wondering the, the, uh, how helpful it is to break this out as a separate unit. And... Yeah, I've said it a number of times. I don't need to say it again. So this is the final thing we'll do before I sign off. I want to do this a little bit more carefully with you because I, I may try this again with a number of other geologists. What is this again? This is looking at reflective surfaces or gravity maps within the, the uh, deepest and most basic bedrock of the Pacific Northwest. If you have no idea where you are, uh, here's Seattle, Washington. Here's the Olympic Peninsula. Here's the Strait of Juan de Fuca. Here's Vancouver Island, and where Jerome Lessman hypothetically was standing uh, a few moments ago and is still standing, crying on the shoulder of a road, sobbing, as a matter of fact. This is Moses Lake, therefore Spokane, John Stockton's house is over here someplace in Spokane, Washington. Ellensburg, my best attempt to locate it. The town of Chelan, this thing, this little squiggly worm is Lake Chelan. Well, come on now, this is the Chelan Migmatite complex. This is the Skagit Nice. Here's the Eniat Fault that, that offsets the Swakane Nice. And at least Finn is calling this all insular. That's new to me. I never really thought of that as all just basic insular super terrain that's offset with the rest of insular that's up here in British Columbia. And I have ignored to this point the West Melange Belt and the East Melange Belt, which is kind of in the foothills between Seattle, Washington and the crest of the Cascades that we know today mostly because they confuse me, mostly because there's not much outcrop. Backcountry Gary's over there showing me stuff. I don't get it. Well, now maybe I have a bit more motivation to be totally honest about it because according to this, if we have offset on the Street Creek Fault, and that's what this is, then these two melange belts are beneath this freaking auditorium. According to this, now, Whoever Finn was, was this a stab in the dark almost 25 years ago and has totally backed off of it? Or is somebody really like this? How many people have seen something like this? Look at this here. He's got the Eniot Fault, again, using these strange reflective surfaces deep down below the German chocolate cake. 
He's got a reflective surface essentially flowing where the Columbia River is today. The Columbia River today, is it an accident? It's coming right down through here and then swinging out here and going to Tri-Cities? I'm just fascinated by this, maybe inappropriately so. But the size of Silesia and this most pressing issue comes to fore here. Now, this, this is what Jerome wanted me to actually share with you all as he was talking, but I'm, I'm unable to know how to do that so far. And we will be getting down to the nitty-gritty within these formations within the Nanaimo group on Saturday morning. Okay. Carol Finn from the USGS. Monty, thank you. And Daryl was chiming in. Daryl is still here. And Danny Coots is here. Okay, and Jerome is here. <laughs> <laughs> Jerome's in the live chat. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> oh, God. What can I say? Uh, last thing I'll say is that, last couple things I'll say to finish this out. <laughs> wow. This is amazing. Um, this goes back to my earliest attempts to just try to use my colored pencils and have this work for me in 2017. Uh, and I wasn't using intermontane and insular. I'm not even sure I knew those terms yet. But I was playing this with this coast belt. And I was using green and pink, crossing the border from the coast belt down into the North Cascades. And the green were all the green rocks, all the oceanic rocks, all the serpentinites, all the ophiolites, uh, I didn't know about the pizza boxes and the, the, the Daryl Collins naps, but that's the idea there. And then all these pink things are the plutons coming up through. Is the coast belt a huge shear zone? Is the coast belt a major Baja BC fault? I'm not the first to ask that. Don't go, Nick. I want to hear Jerome. Well, we've tried 72 times with Jerome. I don't know what... Jerome is willing to answer questions. Oh, I see. Let's do that. Let's do that. Confetti cake. Let's do some live Q&A, viewers. And we're going to improvise by having our geologists answering your questions live instead of on screen. And maybe that's already what's been going on. Maybe you guys have already been doing question and answer while I'm screwing around up here. You need more stuff from Jerome. What would you like me to do? Do you have live questions for, who's, who's with us? Who's the, which geologist do we still have here? Jerome says, go, ask your questions, and he's going to type in some answers, huddled on the shoulder of the road. Who else do we have uh, geologists here? Thank you, Mike. Daryl's still here, or at one point, Daryl said it was insular. Uh, we can, J Jerome has had this incredibly busy fall quarter. And so I doubt that I'll be able to convince him to try this again from his office. But maybe we should, maybe we should try this whole thing again. Maybe we'll just do a, a replay to this thing and I'll eventually delete this one. I don't know. Just entertainment value alone probably should stay, right? This guy is totally screwing up. Uh, Sky Cooley is with us, a geologist. Explain the sand repetition in the Nanaimo. So this is, we're, we're kind of caught here. And Danny Coots is here. Thank you. So Danny Coots in the live chat right now is Saturday morning's guest. And Danny has a brand new paper, 2020, that gets into some details. And he has a plan on how he would build off of this show. 
And then Danny's former advisor, Will Matthews, will be our guest next Wednesday. So we will have two Nanaimo experts getting into, I think, the level that some of you would like to see right now. So maybe this is a bit premature anyway, but I'll just let this roll just a little bit more. Aaron Donaghy is here as well. Thank you, Mike. But again, we're kind of caught in this in this transition episode. Aaron, this is just like your, your show from last, last time. Oh, my God. Uh, let me just read what I'm, in case you're viewing this and can't see the live chat. Why would you still be with us, by the way? We still have 736 people? Oh, I, you want to be here just to watch this accident happening? Yeah, what's what's next? Good question. Uh, I'll just reply to some things. Uh, Colin's coming back in January. Thank you. Uh, Dan says, do it from Jerome's office. Don't delete this video. Thank you. I'll, I'll, it's very, very interesting to see your comments. I'll, I'll let it. I'm going to eat a little fruitcake while uh, you guys visit with each other in the live chat. Put a few zircons on top. Goodman's Bakery, you've got to love it. <laughs> Sky Cooley with the Ron Jeremy reference. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Okay, what are we at? An hour and a half of this? A toast to you. Here's to all of you very kind people for joining us today. Thank you for being so kind. And if you weren't kind in the live chat over the last half an hour, I don't blame you a bit. Here's to you too for being nasty in the live chat. It goes without saying, thank you to Jerome Lessman for giving the, the old college try. And maybe we'll figure something else to do a special episode between now and Saturday. I don't know. I'd be up for it, Jerome. I don't know. You're slammed with all this administrative stuff, plus your teaching schedule. But maybe we'll try to do some kind of bonus whatever. D, DZ. Ooh. Show DZ. Thank you, Jerome. Thanks to all the geologists who showed up today, Sky Cooley and, and a bunch of others, Daryl Cowan, Will Matthews, Aaron Donaghy, et cetera, Danny Coots for joining us today. Um, you want to do it on Friday, Jerome? Okay, we'll do it on Friday. We'll do something on Friday afternoon, maybe. Here's to you. Oh, no, Friday, maybe Friday morning. Okay, we'll figure it out. Here's to all the geologists who joined us today. And that means you. You're a geologist. You have interest in this stuff. And um, I will not enjoy re-watching this one, but I will watch it. Mostly just to be curious if that whole middle section was automatically just cut out. I certainly hope so. 
So what do we know for sure? What do we know for sure? We know for sure that show E is happening this Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And our guest from Vancouver, British Columbia, will be Danny Coots, who finished a Ph.D. dissertation on the Nanaimo and other things, and he will be with us Saturday morning at 9. Want more Nanaimo in your life? Come back a week from today for show F at 2 p.m. From Calgary, Alberta, William Matthews will be with us to talk about a brand new paper that's not even out yet, but hopefully will be accessible to you by Wednesday the 7th. And I think maybe I'll talk to Jerome. We'll try to find a half an hour or something, I don't know, where we do something this Friday, December 2nd, and somehow tack it onto this one, or I don't know, a part B or something like that. But we'll, we'll try to do that. And, and just kind of round this thing out. Okay, it's time to walk home and try to realize what just happened. Thank you, I love you. No, thank you, I love you, and we'll see you next time, whenever that next time is. End stream. <laughs>